Hey there, Boots Owen here. I've got an SMA Sunny Boy grid tight inverter up on the bench. It's a model number SB1700, 139 volts to 320 volts in, and 1550 watts. So it's so as inverters go, it's not the biggest. Uh, I was given it. Well, I bought it for spares. It's got an AC plug over here, which I don't have the connector for, and it seems to have four pins, which is a bit bizarre. Maybe that's the AC plug. We'll have to figure this out inside, take the cover off. It also has these solar connectors that are not the MC4s that we're used to, so we're going to have to try and bodge that as well to see if we can get it to run. So I'm just going to take out these Allen heads, Allen screws that are on it. And we'll get into it. I've recently created a test rig to test solar inverters like this using the AC power from my house. In the past I used to take them out, disconnect the solar panels from the inverter that I use and then put this one onto it to see if that would, uh, you know, put, put the inverter under test on the thing, on the solar panels. So we're getting real, you know, solar DC. But you have to wait for a sunny day and it's the middle of November and there isn't much solar in the world at the moment so let's see that cracks off that's a it's a metal it's an aluminium cover it's got a connector on it there with a little clip so we'll pull that off and uh, put that away for now what have we got we've got three indicator lights we have no buttons on this machine really really there is no buttons on this machine so we can't scroll through anything it's a very heavy machine. I've been told that these are effectively the Land Rovers of inverters. I don't like that earth cable messing around. I'll pull it off. We've got the thinnest live neutral on earth over here. Uh, and if we had cables with spade connectors on them, we could just drop them straight in there. So that's what we're going to do, I'd say. Don't see any burning, don't see any damage. Uh, massive fuse over here on the DC side. Um, power coming in. Quite strange. The power's going to this board here. And it's got... Oh, I hope this thing doesn't have some kind of optimizer system thing going on. Because that would be annoying if it did. That's certainly got some kind of a weird thing going on here. I don't know what that is. This board up on top here, this board up on top here is a DC power in board and it seems to be doing something to the negative side. The uh, positive side just comes straight into the board below, but the negative's going in through these blues. So I can drop a spade connector in, I think, from my DC setup. Yeah, that's what we're going to have to do, I believe. Let's see if it fires up. Okay, so how this works, we've got power coming in through the Variac, getting stepped up through an isolation transformer. Because it's an isolation transformer, it breaks the link between the power. Um, if we didn't have that, it would be difficult to have the solar inverter running on the same power supply as the DC side. So this is going to create the DC power. Uh, isolation transformer going to a rectifier which also has a smoothing capacitor and a bleed resistor a little blue resistor there coming out in this orange and black wire which will be my dc input over here and i've plugged the dc input appropriately into uh, the outer two plugs of this uh, DC input and then over here I've just disconnected the spade connectors that run to the plug and plugged in a an old washing machine cable So let's put that on. Let's get in a bit closer. Let's get in a bit closer so we can see the screen Let's plug in the AC first wait for everything to pop and blow up. That's the AC on AC power is live now we'll plug in the DC and we'll wind it up to about hundred and well, let me let's go 200 volts there and maybe if everything is in order this machine will wake up nothing so far 
It's a bit sleepy. So where does that leave us? Let's put the multimeter on it and check that we're getting power in. So it's set up for DC. Yeah, we've got 213, I don't know if you can see that, 212 DC volts coming in there. Now what I would also like to see then is if there's any DC coming out of this top board because there's switches up here and I don't know what we're do, do, dealing with there. So let's see if, if uh, one of these has a connection going through. Got nine volts there coming out on that side. Nine on that side, that ain't right. So it looks like there's an issue between the DC coming into this board and coming out. So I'll switch it all off again. Yeah, nothing looks popped on that. Let's just check the continuity on that big fuse because that's a simple one to do. I don't see any little fuses. Sounds like it's running through there. Okay, let's switch it all off. Plug it all out. That's the DC off. That's the AC off. So, let's attempt to get, hmm, which one would it be? I'm not gonna say outer and outer. Let's try and get this cable here off the outer side. Needle nose, needle noser is gone. Let's get that off there. Hang that out the back end. Let's pull off this connector that I made. That is putting in a voltage. Let's bypass this board altogether, which may be a bad idea. Drop this in here. I could only see it. This might be the end of this, you know, board if I cock this up, but equally the machine's not working, so it's difficult for me to break something that's already broken. AC's live, DC's on, but it's only on very low volts. Let's bring it up to about 200 again. Oh, we're off. Okay, so there's a problem with that board or something wrong with that board. Green flashing light, BFR version 3.08, SRR version 3.08. I have no idea what that means. GB slash G83 slash 1-1. So that means it's set up for here. Uh, e today, zero kilowatt hours, mode offset. PAC is zero watts, VPV. Oh, okay. E total 13838 kilowatt hours. E today is zero. Mode is waiting. So it's going to start up, hopefully. Green flashing light. Don't know what that means. I've got 215 volts. That should be enough to kick it off. H hours total for. I can't see it now. It's gone. I'm still waiting. I don't know what I'm waiting for. What was the start voltage on this? Um. 139, so it should be within range. It's kind of bang on the middle. 42982 hours. You can see that far clearer on the camera than I can. That's, uh, it's well used, put it that way. I don't know what the waiting is for. Uh, green flashing light still. This could have a three minute start up. I don't know if it needs another connection so so this big plug on the bottom here I'm gonna to need to have a look at the, what this means but it's probably some kind of a I don't know actually it looks to be like a pretty big DC input or DC readout there doesn't seem to be any data cables coming out of this machine there's two plugs down here and here for data, but nothing coming out of them. Like nothing coming out from the inside either, so hard to know. There's a serial cable going from the top board to the bottom board. I don't know if this has a three minute startup like uh, 
the Saj would have. So mode grid monitoring, it looks like there's a relay clicking. There's something, now PAC is still zero, but we have a electrical hum coming off it now. Mode MPP search. And it's putting out 22 watts. So it looks like this machine might just be working if you bypass, and we've got a steady green light, if you can see that just there. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Okay, mode MPP. So I think that's maximum power point tracking, uh, AC. So we've got a voltage drop there once it started down to 160 volts and it went up to 100 watts, was it? Something like that. So you have no choice. 125 watts, 150 volts. Now I could crank that up a bit because 139 volts was the start voltage. So if I crank that up by 10% there, 148 volts, 175 watts. So basically I've created a perpetual motion machine. I'm taking power from the grid and putting it back in. I just need to measure the current to see if I'm a net positive creator, 231 watts, 142 volts. Um, I'm talking nonsense, of course. I'll leave this for a few minutes and uh, think about it. I think I'm running that Variac a little bit hot because uh, it's putting out smoke. <laughs> so the machine's clicked down because it's lost its DC uh, down to zero watts and the voltage should follow. Uh, immediately. Uh, the Variac shouldn't put out smoke. I suspect, however, that it's not necessarily melty smoke. I suspect it's dust smoke. Um, that Variac might not have been used in 20, 30 years. <laughs> Apart from me turning it on to see if it works. Oh, dearie me. I have a bigger Variac, um, but uh, so those three amps or whatever that one's rated at is certainly not enough. I'll have to start using the bigger one for the test bench. It's hilarious. I was wondering what was going on there. Um, I can, I, you know, I expect that if you heat things up a bit, they will change. This machine's, if you heat things up a bit, the voltage coming in could change or whatever as resistances change in wires. Um, oh dear me. Right, that Variac will not do. Let's plug out the AC side for the inverter uh, right now i'm a bit confused here I'm confused i just don't really know what's going on so what does this board do this board hangs in space above the other board it's mounted to what's it mounted to it's mounted to that plug only in the center just this plug here which has a waterproof connector and only has two two connections in it presumably AC and DC something, they come to these two ports in the middle here, this one and this one. Um, there seems to be a number of, I don't know actually, I'll figure this out, G60T120 over here, HAR107, this big fellow. These might be FETs of some kind or they could be some kind of diode, blocking diodes, I don't know. Um, these little guys, what are they? BEWF12S. All of those four along the top are BEWF12S. And I can't see this one down here. There's another one hiding just in there. I can't see the letters on it. So I don't know what that board might do. Uh, somebody in the comments hopefully will tell me. Yeah, so my question for you is what's this board about and why would it not be working? can't see any obvious burning above or below indicating that something's gone dead but any one of those surface mount fellows um, could have been wiped out or even something quite simple like a little resistor very clean neat and tidy board but uh, I don't know what it does <laughs> so it's it's uh, it'll be readily it'll be readily apparent to whoever comments you know, people will know what that is. Let's just see what this says. This is ESS dash S B A L T two eight five O two eight five O nine nine seven A two. And it's got a forty two slash eleven over there in that sticker, which presumably means it's twenty eleven, week forty two. 
Uh, and likewise, there's another one down on that board, 43 slash 11. So I presume that means 2011, making this unit 10, 11 years old. It was probably just decommissioned for age, although maybe there was a fault with this thing here. Uh, it looks like I could use it just bypassing that and obviously not using that variac doesn't <laughs> doesn't take the doesn't take the load very well for a little variac right subscribe if this video is the kind of thing you'd like to see again i've got more inverters to test and uh i'm going to keep on with that questions or comments especially observations about the questions i've asked you in this video it'd be really helpful if you'd answer them and help me out uh, stick them in the comments below Otherwise, um, thanks for watching. See you next time.